It's in charge. So, um, Joe said she wasn't going to make it. I think anybody is going to make it. Joe may not make it. But anyway, yep, sorry. So, um, it turns out that we have to we have to follow all these open meeting laws, which for you guys won't really make that much of a difference, but um, the EPW side will be posting the minutes at the clerk's office. Um, we'll have, I may create a new used page on the website where the agendas will be posted in the minutes. <coughs> so, so we actually have to have somebody do the minutes um, for every meeting. And I think I'm going to volunteer to do it today because I, then I can kind of set up the format. And I may continue to do it. But it's basically that um, you know, have the minutes and then at the next meeting we approve them and then they have to be available electronically. Um, it also means that we can't meet informally outside of these regular meetings or even make any, you know, have any email discussions that would <laughs> seem like we're making any decisions, um, which I don't think we really have anyway, but um, just to be aware. And we, we really haven't made any formal recommendations to the Board of Public Works, but when we do, then we'll be using a more formal process of, of voting them. Mm -hmm. um, and you you know, it really is because you are all appointed by the Board of Public Works. It's more than just and obviously MJ and Ro are board members. Um, I'm kind of staff support. I'm not actually considered part of the the committee, so there hasn't been an official list of people on the committee, has there? Mm -hmm. No, not so does it have to be now, or it won't? No. Well, um, you know, all your all of your applications are mm -hmm. in the file. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, I'm I'm creating two email lists. One is is just, you know, for people who want to get everything and <coughs> for people who just want to be alerted about um, our events mm -hmm. or when we need volunteers or for any reason that we are doing broader outreach. So, all right, so, so I'll do the minutes today. And um, let's see, we've got a lot on the agenda actually. So debriefing about the June 2nd event the survey, which Diana summarized for us, thank you very much. A little bit about the um, presentation last week. This plan for, I'm just going to do this overview right now. Mm -hmm. The plan for fall events, I, I basically want to just um, kind of bookmark these, these dates. We're going to, um, we'll talk about that. So we aren't going to actually do a lot of planning, but I want to make sure that we reserve the facilities and, and kind of agree on what what we might be doing on those days. I've got a few date updates about the VP grant for Flores Community Center and the Board of Public Works finally got the, the vision statement. We'll go over that. And then I've had a, some communication from David Starr and three city councilors about our possible involvement or support with a plastic bag ban and um, styrofoam take, takeout container ban. And then I do want to schedule all the future meetings so that we don't have to, um, you know, decide where we're going to meet every time. I want to be able to reserve for a DPW conference from, you know, to pretty much till the end of the year. You know, we've been meeting the third Wednesday. Uh, what? Generally. Yes. So maybe we'll just go do that. All right. Um, so that I made a couple of copies of this, of the survey summary. And it's really small. Um, but I think you'll... No. Oh, you know what? I didn't bring my, my master copy. 
where it, 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 it um, summarized these, um, you know, what, what participants actually visited. But I do have 51% um, were from Northampton, 34% were from Florence, about 10% were from Leeds, 2.5% were from Haydenville, and then the other 2.5% were South Hadley, East Hampton, Huntington, and Ayers. So it, it, it was ma mainly uh, Northampton residents. Um, but I did have the, uh, the numbers for the participation. I think we had 98 participants for the, or check marks for the bulky rigid plastics. Second was like 83 to Salvation Army. Um, I can't remember these numbers. I'll have to send them out. You can sort of see how many yeah. check marks are in each column. And you, mm -hmm. you know that you kind of, I just consolidated those. If they checked both columns, like you had it set oh, uh -huh. I just consolidated those together. Okay, yeah, people yeah. didn't read the survey correctly. She had listed bulky rigid plastics outside, and some people checked outside instead of bulky rigid plastics. Mm -hmm. or, you know, I can't remember exactly what the survey said, but yeah. they just checked the wrong, or they yeah. circled different things. So it was a little bit hard to know what they were drawn to. Right. Yeah, the way the survey was set up was, <laughs> look at you squ squinty at this, it's so small. <laughs> uh, you put your name in uh, it a lot of times. <laughs> How did yeah. I know? Mac told me. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so, uh -huh. so the survey was set up in a confusing way because we had the sponsor and then the activity kind of next to each other. And they checked both of them. But I, um, I think what's, what's particularly interesting about these is some of the things that they want to do it, uh, you know, for future reuse. And I think we'll have to, um, I have the results from the, um, we did a survey at the September 17th collection last year and also at the toy exchange. So I think I may go back to all those and kind of find some of these materials and see, you know, what kind of, what comes to the top. And these, um, I think the the the, uh, um, the comments, people were very appreciative. Um, they were sorry that it was such bad weather. <laughs> <laughs> um, there were quite a few that um, you know about better notice, better advertising. But when you look at how how many ways that people found out about it, I think that it shows that we had. We were trying to do a lot of outreach um, mm. through many avenues. Right. One that, that we can try to bump up the next time is some of the social media. Mm -hmm. and the radio, too. Yeah, the radio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, how about for um, maybe like Or maybe part of that time, I do want to get a little bit of feedback about last week's meeting. Um, do you want to just, oh, and also you wrote up a lot of notes, which I um, I have, this one. This, these are all I was Alicia's hoping. notes about her yeah. deep breathing. Mm -hmm. But I was kind of hoping, too, that, that, every, that everybody had been asked for their stuff yes. so that we could, yeah. it wouldn't be such a... Alicia says. <laughs> no, no, no. no I, I didn't make copies of this. I, but I would like to get some feedback from from all of you. Now it seems like a long time ago, but we just haven't met. Um, are we still? Uh, just as far as the agenda, I, what's the? Um, when uh, I was trying to get the potato chip bags, you know, get uh -huh. the kids in the uh -huh. yeah. Um, this is the leads. Uh, okay, so that's part of the June section. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> yeah. I had like four hours of June second, and uh -huh. and everybody else wants to like let's go to July, <laughs> and I don't blame them. So, uh, yeah, I think it's good to learn we from what we could. Mm -hmm. Well, where shall we start? <laughs> um, because.
because um, I think I think that the first question would be like, what is the best way to make use of our time, and yeah. what the reuse, what is the biggest and most important reuse message, and our special events, the way to get it out. So that's like all of those things could be a good hour in themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm kind of sad that we're not yeah. all like uh, already thinking of. <laughs> um, well, we're here to, to think about it right now. And awesome. Can we set separate meetings, like sure. some committee meeting? Yes, that's we can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so so that was the big one. Like, what is what is what do you suppose we should? What's the best use of our time? What's the message that we're trying to get out? And what's the best way to get that message out? And is it special events? Is it a completely different system of incorporating signage at the dump and transfer station? Um, well, do you want to answer the first question first? Or the first three questions first? I, was, mm. I think that, well, so, yeah. I, I think it's a major question, you know, mm -hmm. if, if um, if one day events while we're still pursuing the permanent facility, that's something that the school system has to continue to do. Because in my mind, the planning for the fall starts now. Mm -hmm. And um, so if, if this group wants to focus on just the permanent facility and not one day events, then that, that that's what has to be. I thought we were charged I thought we were just reminded that we were charged to do one day events and that we were not to be focusing so much on the permanent facility or maybe parallel track. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And I thought that it was broader than just the reuse facility. I thought that it was getting to zero waste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that, I'm confused about that myself, mm -hmm. about this. Because I joined it when it was a solid waste action committee, and it's become the reuse committee. And right. so, where's the line, and what are we allowed? Yeah, I I should tell you um, that the board of public works is, is planning to appoint another committee that's focused specifically on zero waste policy and planning, and it and it it's dovetailing with um, a major EPA initiative that's going on in the um, EPA Region 1 Northeast. So there's going to be some trainings and workshops and other municipal technical assistance happening this next fall. So um, you certainly, if you're interested in that, you can certainly serve on that committee too. But that one's going to be more of a, like a task force with a mission of probably um, coming up with a whole policy that would be um, an amendment to the sustainability plan for the, sit for the city. Um, so I would say this, sit this group is not charged with zero waste, um, but will be, you know, you're, you are more focused on reuse at this point. And is that, a, how is that process of being appointed to that? Um, it'll, it'll be an application. So the charge of this group, just to reiterate, is to um, to work for reuse center, expanded, and to do these one day events. Is that correct? Actually, we do have a mission statement. I don't have it with me. Mm -hmm. Didn't what didn't uh, Row or MJ read a little bit from it? Or That's what I'm referring to. Was yeah, it, um, uh, I think Ro they were both. The yeah, because I thought it was just reuse center. <laughs> Clearly stated, it wasn't. So, um, I'll go on. Go ahead. So, so, best use of our time as volunteers. Well, you know, I feel a little skewed because this was the only one I've ever participated in, and you know, in terms of volunteer hours and and attendance, I didn't feel like it was a good use of time. Mm -hmm. And also, I left feeling so much more confused personally about my waste. I have. A pile this big in my garage. Where do I put this now? So I just thought, gosh, if I am so confused, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how on earth is the general public going to be less confused? Because I'm, I'm making an effort, a big effort. But I felt like, 
but I know that other events have been better attended and people felt really excited by them and felt like it was a really good use of time. So I think, you know, so I don't want to just form my opinion based on one event. So, I, you know, it's helpful to hear from other people who've been at other events. I'm just really hoping, I, I think the, the weather did work against us and I also think that having so many things going on at once, not only the six things that were going on outside, but the 12 things that were going on inside. The media, like, no matter how much I, I had press releases for every single thing that was happening, and the media just didn't pick up on, you know, all the details of things, like, you know, what, what kinds of packaging that we use upcycles was collecting. And mm -hmm. So, I think in a way, you know, having, as I said, six things going on outside and the whole fair, it was probably too much to, to communicate. Do you think that's way. why they didn't pick up on it? I wonder why they didn't. But I, I'm not sure I would say it was too much, although I don't know no. what I would say. If I were a writer on the paper, I would, I would have looked at all of them. Yeah. So. Well, but I had, as I said, I had a separate press yeah, release right. on just on yes. bike snap on mm -hmm. and right. about and made lots of good recycling. stories. Mm -hmm. But they they just didn't pick it up. Is that common for a multiple choice? So. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it might not have to do with how many but more mm -hmm. something else. Um whatever was your question. Yeah, I felt um, like it wasn't worth I felt like we put a lot of energy and effort into it, and so it wasn't worth the turnout. That we there would have been a better use of our energy and time. The turnout in the cafeteria. Even the grand rides there. I mean, it was horrible. Don't you mm -hmm. think that had a lot to do with the mm -hmm. turnout? I mean, I loved what I loved it. <laughs> I loved what happened at my table, and it was so not because it was my <laughs> table. I don't mean that. And the whole setup was so um, educational and exciting to me, and it was mm -hmm. pouring rain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I do think that there was a lot of education, and there was a lot of um, a lot of you know person what you can do with your trash and you know, we're going to sort it out for you or confuse you more, whichever. <laughs> I think we did both. Yeah. 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 Um, and Diana's uh, displays were cool, yeah. and it was like it was definitely yeah. cool. Um, but perhaps that that same energy that we put into it, we would hit more people if we instead of did our own mm. event each each time. We might do better. We could we everyone might be better served if we um, uh, globbed on as onto as many other events as possible and um, spent our time soliciting other um, you know for example. It, uh, Jessica and I are going to do the strawberry social at the uh, Valley River mm -hmm. Co-op, co and then tomorrow. there's going to be good. sidewalk sales mm -hmm. later in the summer. That's our, like there's already a group of people doing that, and why aren't we mm -hmm. I'm reaching a, out I'm to be one of the artists with the table there? So. I'm, I'm just saying, like yeah. things like that, yeah. where yeah. you know, where yes, I, yes. you know, where we get the businesses and um, you know, like we get the bid people. Uh, involved mm -hmm. and that, that's a, and the Chamber of Commerce and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that way we're not alone, but we're always sort of maybe everywhere we can yeah. get uh, our little cells. Right. It will in there. be mm -hmm. a smaller scale thing, though. And yeah. It doesn't collect. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be, be a collection. Right. But um, education would be really right. Important. So it'll be really education. Important. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is yeah, that's yeah. great. I, I just think about that with that like that the takeout container display, mm -hmm. you know, figuring mm -hmm. out where that yeah, could be displayed. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like more tech with that display, because mm -hmm. there were still, when I would look at that, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, wait a second, that thing is compostable, but it's not compostable. Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. the story? So I just like, like I'd help, help you write up background on that. I was like, I, I also love the, the peanut stand. I mean, I would love to like, uh -huh. set that up. How much do you love it, Karen? Because it's not I'll my little house. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> no, I'll take it. I think it, it could be set up anywhere. It could be set up at a, uh -huh. in a, in a 
I love in a too. school cafeteria. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I go in and the doctors. It was set up in a school yeah. cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there was somebody that wrote mm -hmm. in the suggestion to have something set up in Thorns, so that's mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the idea. Yeah, yeah but you know where you'd be set up there is in, like on the second floor across from Brooklyn, mm -hmm. where they do art side out and other things, where that empty spot is. Right. Where they do different. And but if we're we in the desert. But not not necessarily the answer your questions things, mm -hmm. but uh, the takeout display or something mm -hmm. that somebody could just walk by and be like, uh, and mm -hmm. get some information from. Mm -hmm. yeah. Without mm -hmm. a lot of staff. Yeah, displays, educational displays. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was going to, so I do agree that probably the weather affected it, but I felt like we put all that effort in. But if we actually had had a, tur a large turnout, I didn't feel like we had enough volunteers to actually man everything. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like people would have overwhelmed us because we wouldn't have had enough volunteer staff to kind of be where we needed to be to answer questions, to you know, interact with the folks. So either, you know, beef up the volunteer staff or... And, and yeah, or reduce the number of things that are set up. Yeah, we need to be educated. Or mm -hmm. I could have called in some volunteers. I just never got mm -hmm. the idea of where we, they were needed or what, yeah. who I was looking for. So I didn't even Actually, we, we might, since I'm not, it's not one of my story groups, um, we might have a volunteer for the ADA. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So somebody who's really good at that. Mm -hmm. So what I kept on feeling during that event, and there were some great moments, you know, there, uh, on the inside. And I really admired the people who were there on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, was not to lose sight of the prize because I just felt like, you know, all this energy, what we really need is this all the time, you know, and, and the education all the time and the endpoints all the time. Because um, I don't believe that people are going to save up it, you know, unless they have a really big garage or something, mm -hmm. or the, it, the, the creme de la creme are going to save up their stuff for six months. Or, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually that is another of my concerns, because after reading the book Rubbish, where the archaeology students went have gone through garbage for 30 years, they determined that if a city has a hazardous waste collection, but it's only once a year or less, then what ends up happening is the people who go to that, yeah, that's great, they drop off the hazardous waste, but the folks who, for whatever reason, they heard about it, but then they couldn't make it, what ends up happening is the two months after that event, there's more hazardous waste going into the landfill than the previous two months. Meaning they're like, oh, I really wanted to go to that, oh, I didn't make it. Well, I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff into my normal garbage. And so if that's going to happen after an event like this, where you know, now everyone's throwing all their stuff into the garbage, then it's sort of counterproductive. Mm -hmm. Well, um, one thing about that is that we have money from that grant to do a citywide mailing, which I want to start working on now and send out in probably early, October, or early September. And and it will go to every residence and every business in the Hampton, and we can say, save the date, save the stuff, you know, be very specific about what what will be collected. Um, just as we um, have that uh, dumpster for rigid plastic all the time at uh, the landfill, could we have a smaller bin for styrofoam so that doesn't, you know, so that it, it can just... You know, there could be a, a nice exchange, but you're never going to really necessarily want to exchange styrofoam unless there's a really big art bay, <laughs> um, so that may, so that we don't have to hope that people will. Mm -hmm. Aren't you charging for styrofoam? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would be the. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, because it costs well, us know, money. We'll, well, if we just had a bin, I mean, I don't. I, again, I don't know how it would be, but I would imagine something similar to the rigid plastic, where it could just be set aside for that, maybe the big push bag or something. Um, here's one of my my hard and fast rules is not to start a program that may not be able to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to see is this company come to Western Massachusetts and put up, a, you know, have a franchise here. Mm -hmm. I'm not, it's not sustainable to be shipping our styrofoam to Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. at, at a significant cost. So what we're trying to do is 
get more communities to do these um, one day events. So South Hadley's doing it. I think a few more will be doing it in the fall to demonstrate that there's a need and there's a supply on here. Mm -hmm. So we've already been talking to this company about what would it take to for them to establish another site in Wilson Mills. So well, I don't know what he got on that Saturday was really gonna woo him. <laughs> no, over. well, actually, because if I hadn't brought all the innards of the Pleasant Street video collection, <laughs> <laughs> all the little yeah. styrofoam inserts, mm -hmm. I would have been missing well, very much. Yeah, they, they said that it was typical for a purse collection mm -hmm. not to have um, not to have a huge amount, but I, he he said that was between 25 and 30 cubic yard or cubic yards, which I didn't actually see before he left. But I, I think there were some people that came in at the end who went to a significant amount. But in any case, I'm very interested in, in having styrofoam as a continuous program, but it doesn't make sense for people to be driving their styrofoam to us and then driving it all the way to the road. So um, I guess what the other thing that um, I learned while I was uh, in an effort to, I was definitely I was focused on the graphic of the garbage truck and trying to get at the, the paper, the, the compost, and the non-recyclable, the other plastics that go in. And going to the schools was really educational. Um, uh, and at Leeds, this was just the result of looking for getting potato chip bags, and um, I put up a, a little sign while I was talking to them about, you know, can, can I please have your potato chip bag? And um, this is how we do it because they have a compost um, uh, bin, you know, shake it out and put it in this box, and then I would every Friday I would come and pick them up, and um, I kept track of it. And then after the event, I kept going back. So in the end. There was a total of 285 wrappers. But while I was collecting it, it was really clear that there were all these other things that would um, help the compost program there and the kids there because there's, so there's just all these other issues that aren't reuse issues that came up. So uh, at Jackson Street and at Leeds, they're little kids and they, ha they have these trays and they have to manage their milk carton, pour the milk out. They have straws, which they can't put in the same container that they put the milk, then the containers, then the trash, where there's straws and their forks and their, and then there's food over here. And it's just like, it's hard to hold, it's hard to do. And uh, sometimes at Jackson Street, they can put the tray on a bench, depending on where the trash is. But there's no such resting spot where you can use two hands or, you know, or even have a chance. And um, so, th so their own ideas, some of them were really interesting and could help them help the program because on the, by the last day, um, I mean, you could just see all this just food and stuff just landed on the floor and it's heartbreaking because the custodian like hates it and you right. want him to love it and right. he just, you know, there's it's so much extra work for them to have that compost every week mm -hmm. and you just want to make it easy. So. Um, so I would love to talk to somebody about ways to make that uh, easier for the, the whole system, mm -hmm. like the kids and the folks that work there, um, <coughs> and, uh, and maybe including extra bins because it just makes it easier for the kids to know when they see all the straws or all the plastic going mm -hmm. into a set, right. like, so that they don't have to wonder right. which bin is the easier, I think, if they knew what goes right. right here. Yeah. Just, just so you know, I, um, as one of the DEP grants that I submitted was $25,000 for a zero waste um, public school project, which mm -hmm. would make them go, all the schools except for Ryan Road, go to durable trays, silverware, and compostable everything, no plastic in the, in the classrooms. And, you know, it e would even go so far as, you know, whatever trash the kids brought from home for home lunches goes back with them. And mm -hmm. there's just no trash in the cafeteria, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. So we'll hope for that. That includes um, some money for 40 years. So. Mm -hmm. 
Could you include money for little, you know how they have those little places yeah. you put down your yeah. check and slide mm -hmm. around? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would, it, we had had money to, for new um, collection systems at all the schools. So, the only thing with that is that it has to be stainless steel. So I mm -hmm. think we'd have to try to find something, you know, from a soup for the food service right, that right. we use mm -hmm. there. Yeah, that's what I'm picturing. So I'm just so weird that we have 905. Oh, I wanted to mention the video uh, part. I because I didn't get a, you know have a chance to go outside and video and video everything inside. I feel like it would be a stretch to do sort of a general coverage of the event. I did get you know good coverage of bag share, so I could make a little bag share educational piece for NCTV and Sally doing the T-shirt bags. Uh, I got loose upcycling, but I f personally I feel like. I don't really want to put that out because I see her, I don't even, I, I'm not even quite sure what her intention is behind, you know, taking plastic bags and go, putting them through this sort of toxic process of outgassing. I mean, she herself admitted, you got to have good ventilation. And I'm thinking, oh my God, like this woman is like breathing the, these toxic plastic fumes in and... You know, I, I just don't really see that I personally want to promote people being good with that because to me it just says people are going to get on board and say, oh, this is great. She's reusing this product thing, object to make product. But then first of all, you then have to down the road that pro those products are going to go into the landfill eventually. And at the same time, I see she's like, a mini incinerator with no federal, with no regulation. I mean, an incinerator wouldn't get away with, you know, I mean, groups like environmental groups are against incinerators because they outgas and, uh, you know, these toxic. And so, yeah, I just, uh, I don't know what all your take is, but I feel like, like morally I can't put that out and encourage people to support. Cause then we'll get a whole bunch of lose all over the place you know, spewing the in, and she said, well, eventually I want to have one of those, like a laminator machine, so she can just put the, oh, and then there won't be so much outgassing. I'm like, well, I, I, I can't see that something less bad is good, and so, yeah, I just, I don't know. Yeah, I, a video about the bag share, and um, maybe Sally, because they're both mm -hmm. doing reusable bags. Did you get any of the Merc game? No, I mean, I didn't... S I saw maybe two little kids playing in the game and, you know, was on something else. So I didn't... I couldn't, like, switch over to that. And so, yeah, I didn't ca capture any of that. Well, about the Merc game, um, on my notes for that, um, I guess we should go through it. And, I mean, when I say we, <laughs> whoever, um, sort and clean that and really think about the items that we want to keep in that game. Mm -hmm. And if, if you want to keep that game, because you clearly don't love it. And <laughs> no, no, I, I, I think it's great, but you need a lot of support. I mean, um, so like you maybe know, for transportation and assembling it and mm -hmm. running it, it's pretty yeah. intensive. And so, and the, so the storing it and the accessories in some other kind of you know, way and figuring out how we can either use it or, or not use it and uh, how we can have it borrowed by a community group and I just and I check list of items and I did um, I did have that song now on my Apple so it can get downloaded and then be a, that kind of disc if that's the way you, it wants to be you know just like what what do you want have to happen with that game and here's my next note what should we do with it <laughs> what should we store what should we do with the help peanut help help stand um, it's good for backyard parties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll take it. I really, I think we should develop that. I just um, don't know, like, I mean, because if the Merc game, which is definitely more waterproof than mm -hmm. that poor thing, mm -hmm. it's just a piece of paper, mm -hmm. you know, it's just or craft mm -hmm. paper. Yeah. <laughs> it can't be, it can't well, get stored in the same spot. Actually, it's, I think it's just such a good idea that maybe eventually, you know, we would get something more permanent. But, oh, no, but I just mean, like, I, I don't know how much longer it should be on my couch. 
I know, but uh, it can't go, like, if it goes to the morphine, like, where will we store it? Mm. I'll keep it in my mind. Because okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I think it's a fabulous idea. And maybe make it even more, like, mm -hmm. exactly like Peter was saying. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is cute. But it's big. <laughs> and, and, you know, I could see having all kinds of, kind of props behind it so that, you know, when people ask you about plastics, you can bring your own examples. And mm -hmm. That was your brainchild, wasn't it? Um, I think it was, you did the peanut stand. Yeah. But oh, well, you had said yeah, health stand. You had yeah. said, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't matter, but Alan Robinson, um, not Alan Robinson, Thermal Robinson, made it and I saw him yesterday and said yeah, people love your stuff. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Um, and a beautiful question mark. <laughs> my, um, my signature. <laughs> 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 um, so, so, the, so there's so much in those other things though and um, and, and the items about um, for example so going back to um, the questions that are on my list that are, um, uh, was there enough time for volunteers to do a thorough job? Did the organization have an up-to-date mailing list? I would say we probably didn't. Um, did we target a well-defined market, which is kind of an odd thing, but did we? I don't know. And did we pre-sell enough tickets, which is just another way of saying, mm -hmm. did we push it in, you know, enough to, you know, so I think that publicity piece. Um, and did we make any avoidable mistakes? Anybody? I think collecting uh, email or interest, a way of contact information on the surveys would have been good because the people who were like, this is yeah, great, you should do it again, yeah. I want to send it volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I think probably a, a really good, um, like a complete press list and then, um, you know, designated does it, like which things come from the city, which things come from the release committee, that kind of thing. Can you keep this and we can reconvene something before the next event mm -hmm. so that we can make mm -hmm. sure that we apply all of these questions before we go forward? Mm -hmm. I feel like we're out of time for yeah. 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 And, and, and also organization, I think, you know, maybe like immediate, I think there was talk about the next week getting together and evaluating it, you know, that in the future, that's an error that I think we can remedy really easily. You know, mm -hmm. brainstorming soon after it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we actually did that after the toy exchange last year. Right. I think it's a good idea. Um, do you want to just spend a couple of minutes on the harvest power presentation? Just like, not about the content of it, but you know, your reaction to having that. Presented to you, to this group. Mm -hmm. well, I, in a nutshell, my reaction was I was very impressed with the presentation, but I also heard your passionate uh, appeal to not have it cited in the ward up here on the landfill site. I certainly understand people's reluctance to commit to a long term yeah, too many open source facility in that when, ward. Right, you've been told one thing too many times and then another thing happens, but, um, uh, you know, in It's too bad I can't go any other area, like, you know, in a paradise pond, maybe, or in the meadows, or somewhere else in town. <laughs> or the industrial park or something. Industrial you park know, would be the best so place, but there's no methane. And, and so close to coke. <laughs> right, right. That would be the most logical thing. Right, right. But, you know, it was, I thought it was exciting to hear that they found ways to process all these organics in, in a way that they can add value to them and make money and produce products that are, you know, like the fertilizer and so forth. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really come up with a lot of hard questions about problems that, that, you know, other than the ones we mentioned in the meeting, like the trucks. And I think I mentioned that the trucks would be open, and so there would be potentially odors from the trucks, although the facility itself right, is there's closed. There's no way that they would have open trucks. No, no okay. All right. So, so. Uh, they were saying yes. that when they were bringing stuff in, the connector between the well, truck and the tank was going to be. I mean, the, 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 um, the intake building, mm -hmm. so that 
the trucks are dumped inside the building and the d building has negative pressure so that they're basically sucking air in all the, all the time from the leak. Okay. They didn't mention that. No, they didn't go into any detail. No. I've just seen okay. some of the no, when, he, when he was giving the presentation, he was saying that's the point where there might be order, order is the truck to the, to the pre-processing mm -hmm. facility. But, um, I don't know, some, some people in this group, like David Stark in particular, and some others who aren't here now, like um, Jessica and who else, Jesus, Jesus, were more interested in the organics. But this group, you know, it's not, organics isn't necessarily... I'm still it's very much I'm interested in organics. It doesn't feel like a reuse, and I and I felt like our group was redirected to reuse, and so I, I didn't think organics was part of what we could do anymore. Not that I'm not interested, mm -hmm. but that it seemed like we were redirected. Yeah. yeah, I'm definitely interested, but I feel like there are still a lot of unanswered questions. I mean, I'd love to go visit their facility up in Canada and, you know, and ask the residents, so how is it living next to a biogas digester? Right. And, you know, really get the dirt on from the people who know, not just listening to this a nice the presentation. The facility that they had that would be similar size in London, Ontario. Well, for 100,000 people, so. Um, yeah. That's much larger. Yeah. Well, as, uh, so this this was article because I I didn't know that we were directed to nearly renew. So I I, de I definitely um, I might not be right. Yeah, no, I no I like I'm so I I uh, write these things. I mean I clip all these things for and um, so this is the UMass going with a different firm uh, called Re Community. And uh, they have its headquarters in Rutland, Vermont, mm. and blah, 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 and have to pass it around. But they, the, the, um, the idea of having enough compost to make it worthwhile was, is interesting to me because we don't, ha we don't have complete participation in, that, in our program, and how might we have enough to make it worthwhile. Um, the, so what, for the strawberry social, um, I was curious about where, I wasn't sure if the River Valley took their compost to the same place as the city, so I ended up talking to um, uh, Cover Technologies, which manages the farm for, the, what eventually I found out was the, they are the friends farm, farm industry, yeah. like guys, and I got the impression that um, they'd be happy to have m uh, more of a stream, that, it, it, that it, it's not doing so very well that they, you know, they're struggling to keep up with the uh, Case, you know, that they, it seemed like um, even the, the facility that already exists is, that could be good to them. So it's, un it's, under, it's under capacity. It, yeah, it's I, feel, capacity. I feel like, um, so it, it would be interesting to. Do they need a different permit to get to accept more? Um, they, they're actually um, a, on a farm, state owned land. Yeah. And they started out with a firm registration, but they they managed to increase their capacity. But they're not site assigned. They're not a okay. commercial facility. Okay. Okay. They're just kind of an expanded farm um, composting site. Extremely um, expanded. Yeah. It, it looks like a commercial operation mm -hmm. within the. But they're still under the. Department of Agricultural Resources Registration. Um, there's also Ben Goldberg has a, a, a different alternative of, um, he was at that Harvest Power presentation and he's more interested in aerobic instead of anaerobic processing. Which mm -hmm. Is he the one right. person? Mm -hmm. okay. Or even um, large scale vermicomposting. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, which is still an aerobic process instead of an anaerobic process, but there's less methane production involved in that, and I didn't actually look at the, um, he had a different company that was suggesting that. Were they doing the power out of there? Or, I can't remember no. exactly, it was no. just the, it was just dealing with the waste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so there are alternate. I, I I lean toward the aerobic process more than the anaerobic process myself. I feel like there's not enough energy that comes out of that methane production. But I I'm, I haven't really studied it. It's sort of just a gut feeling. Mm. I'm not really sure where this is. Mm. The, the reason that Harvest Power made a presentation was because they were persistent in trying to mm -hmm. like talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. um, there are other companies that are contacting, well, even like Ben Goldberg is trying to see if they can set up a presentation for this other company. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'll just keep you updated as, as um, as it evolves, because nobody's really taking it on. There's no, there's no, no committee. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, the board of public works has a. Well, uh, would that be under the, this if there's a new thing zero, about the, the zero, zero waste, waste yeah. committee might mm -hmm. take it up. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely interested in organic. Mm -hmm. If there is a, if there is a spin-off group or a committee okay. for organic, I'm interested. All right. So we'll, we'll just keep you in the loop as, as it goes forward or not. Okay. Um, let's see. It's real time. Um, the plan for fall events, the October 13th, I'm just going to skip September 29th for now. Wait, no, tell us what it is. September 29th? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about just having a bulky, rigid class that's... Um, take it or leave it because I think there's a lot of demand for it and even though we have we have an ongoing program at the landfill that is strictly recycling. People yep. throw it in the box yep. and it's gone and yep. there's no opportunity no to use. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think what we saw this last time was that there was a lot of stuff that was be, being taken away. Right. Even in the pouring rain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and there were people, people hanging around waiting to see wow. where other people and, were going to And people came at the end, and the mm -hmm. Salvation Army basically took everything at the end. Yeah. I mean, Great. I, I think there's just, it's as long as you have enough people who kind of know what what's acceptable, mm -hmm. I mean, putting it all out on the lawn and, and you know, trying to keep the kids' stuff together and the lawn stuff together and the gardening stuff together. I think we could really um, expand it as a reuse event. Mm -hmm. And with, you know, and that, just that. That's not true. Mm -hmm. I, I just got oh, but you're So that's, that's what I was thinking for the September 29th. Just Great. do that. Does that mm -hmm. sound like something you want to do? Yeah. Um, and maybe I know um, there's some organizations that might be looking for specific things, like they can animal stuff. Mm -hmm. They want pet carriers and, you know, feeding bowls and all that kind of stuff. So we might team up with a couple of those. The October 13th is the um, Rally for the Arts, Reuse Rally for the Arts. And we already have lined up that's that um, JFK... PTO is doing electronics collection, so we don't have to really do anything. We just kind of co-promote with them. And, um, and we'll also have the styrofoam people there that day. Um, hey, can I ask a quick question? Yes. Um, somebody asked me about the TVs. Would mm -hmm. that be where you could yep, bring your TV? We collect those at the, at the landfill electronics. all the time. But but to, and there's a pay? Yes. You have to pay. Yeah, would there be a fee here, too? Yes. It's a fundraiser, but so how much would the fee be? This is one of my uh, friends. I think it's ten dollars for a, a okay. small right, I'll tell her and it goes up. I can probably send you. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to send you the fee structure? Sure. Okay. Yeah. And do you want the landfill fee structure? The, do you want the alternative the um, landfill? Or yeah. Or? Yeah, I can give you that. She and just wanted to know where to bring it, and I mm -hmm. said, because um, she thought this one in June. I said, no, you can't do that. Yeah. One in June. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I've, we'll we'll probably have some separate meetings on October thirteenth because we're going to the um, what's happening in the community room. Um, 
And I think we probably will keep it to a three ring surface outside. Mm -hmm. Just those kind of um, Vice Not Bombs wants to come again, and Salvation Army wants to come again. So I guess we'll just choose and make those mm -hmm. who wants to come. November 15th, I just put it on there as a placeholder because that's America Recycles Day. And the. Um, Which day is that November? What? 15th. And the Springfield Materials Recycling Facility is doing an event at the Delaney House, which you would be invited to. Oh, the same um, thing as last year. Yeah. So, I don't know if we want to just do something for America Recycles Day. Mm -hmm. um, it might even just be having some displays somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, like, there might be a store downtown that would let us put stuff in the windows. Yeah. 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 Yeah, just to bring a little bit of attention to sure. it. That, mm -hmm. And then December 8th, we have the Smith Lake Cafeteria for the Toilet Street. Mm -hmm. So does that sound mm -hmm. doable for the fall? It's, it, November 15th, I think it's going to be, we're not doing an event. I just want to start thinking about what we could do just to highlight um, Use and recycling. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to do some quick updates on the DEP grant. I actually submitted multiple grants. So um, I know we're getting $1,500 for the re-scheme because it's one of those gimme kind of parts of the grant. You apply for it and get it. So mm -hmm. there's $1,500 that we will probably get in the fall. I'll say We'll get notified in late September, and we'll be able to spend it somehow in the fall. Um, Do you have a plan for that already? No. Okay. Well, I just put it in there. Um, I know we had brainstormed some other ideas for grants, for you know shelving and other things that we could do. But what I ended up submitting was an eleven thousand dollar request to do a coupon book for. Hampshire and Hamden counties for the use organizations and businesses. And it would be, um, so basically everything in this in this little passport to savings reuse book would be, you know, coupons for reuse businesses and organizations. Mm -hmm. And then there would be um, a website that goes along with it so that people can just go to the website and print out these coupons and it would have connections to Google Maps so that they can see where they are and QR codes and like really kind of develop this website that's just about re existing reuse opportunities. So the, the coupon book actually would expire it, it's a, because it's hard to keep those up to date. Um, but you'd still have, a, in the back of the book, they'd have a list of all, and addresses and phone numbers of everything in the book. Um, but the website could could go on. Um, so it, it to, was... It's to promote re existing reuse mm -hmm. possibilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So is this instead of the sheds that we talked about already? Yeah, I just reuse? couldn't do that because we don't have any plan for, you know, where the sheds would go, how the sheds would be used. Mm -hmm. um, there just wasn't enough. I couldn't make it up. Mm -hmm. that, um, you know, it was just not at a point where we could, where I could pitch it. Because mm -hmm. it, you know, if, if maybe, we, you know, we were trying very hard to go to the Florence Community Center, which is the next update. Mm -hmm. Oh, before I go off the grants, so that I also put in a $25,000 grant for the Zero waste schools grant. I also put in another one that that they said I had too many, so I had to withdraw one, <laughs> um, which was basically a fatal flaw analysis for the landfill site of what else could be done there. Mm -hmm. So it would be a, like a consulting group coming in and looking at potential uses, and including you know that the. The neighborhood has too many open sores. I mean, that could be mm -hmm. just a fatal flaw of the landfill site. So, but anyway, we had to withdraw that one. Mm -hmm. 
Um, well, maybe next time. So, any questions about the DP? Well, we won't hear anything until September. Um, so the, um, I guess I'm just. Um, I, would there have been a way to um, sort of help with that, or end in the in the? In the I, th I think the timing was just, if, if you recall, the deadline was uh, was mm -hmm. June 13th. Mm -hmm. And we had a meeting the week before, and so mm -hmm. I was I was pulling together, you know, the budgets and the, you know, some letters of support and mm -hmm. writing the whole grants, and that there was just no time to figure out where these sheds were going to go and what was going to happen. And they, so the, how the much free time do they usually do for these RFPs? <coughs> this time was it was about a month, yeah. but uh, you know, with the June second event, and I actually had the has the drug collection, the hazardous waste collection, compost bin distributions. Um, you know, like that. My spring was just like yeah. so straight. Moving forward, if, you, if the reuse sheds are something that you would like to get grant funded in mm -hmm. eventually, is there a list of, of questions that you need answers to before that could be a yes. grant proposal? Yeah. I, could you I, give that and we could come? Well, I think it, it, it has to come from the other side. Like, what's, what's the concept? And then I can ask you the questions. Hmm. I don't really have a good idea of what the concept okay. is. Okay. So we have to develop um, first. Yeah. To develop the, you know, the idea, the framework of it. And do and these grant requests come out frequently? Yes, actually, um, well, this is, it's, it's annual, um, but they often have a second round in the spring because it turns out that some, you know, municipalities that, you know, say they, they apply for pays you throw bag system and it's obvious by the spring that they're not going to need their $50,000 grant because they're not going to get it mm -hmm. through town meeting. Mm -hmm. So there's often some money that comes available at the, in the spring. But the first round is in the fall? When is the first round? Or in well, the winter? Or? Yeah, so we apply now and it's awarded in the No, September. but when is the first application process? He said then June 13th was the was oh, the and then, oh, and then I see. It's that awarded like, in the fall. Yeah, then it takes them that, that long to decide. Yeah. And, uh, that was the big one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. And there may be other sources of money for that. So, mm -hmm. you know, if the sheds, if that's the way we want to go, then I think we can figure out the funding. Yeah. Sheds and, and I, thought, I, thought, I really like the idea of having... Um, Usable um, containers at special events, either mm -hmm. a backyard party or you know mm -hmm. other sorts of things. And, and if the ones that exist now are not aren't doing their that function, ones that would would be a system for a way that it would work. I think this would be really great. Okay. So same thing. If if we if you work on a concept, then I'll work on. It work with you to figure out how to make it workable. Mm -hmm. and so before it before it's past nine thirty. Um yes. <laughs> it is. Um, it is. <laughs> but Carrie you can you have one more mm -hmm. oh update update about the community center. Lawrence Community Center last last Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Last Tuesday there was supposed to be a finance committee meeting there and a tour and they're deciding what to do with the whole facility. Mm -hmm. The meeting was delayed and I will find out when it's when it's actually scheduled because um, I'll be there. Because I think we need to represent that we have an interest in it and do they uh, know this? Should we do we could we put it in writing? The, um, the, the, I talked to the director of central services so he's aware of it. But, but the finance committee is making the decision. Yeah, the finance committee is not aware of this. Should we should we shoot them a memo? Yeah, I think we should be um, we should have something to get them 
Who might have been that day at that meeting? Who could win? I don't know the way it was scheduled. That was supposed to be last Tuesday and it was rescheduled. <coughs> but I'm curious, so if the city sells that building, would the existing tenants be kicked out? I mean, I'm a volunteer with Valley yeah. Free Radio and they've had a station there for a few years, so well, sure <coughs> what would happen to the existing organization? Yeah, well, they, they must have leases, so they have to figure that in, that they're not going to break the yeah. lease. Yeah. I don't know. I think there's a lot to find out. Is there there's talk of selling the building? Like well, they haven't made a, a decision, but they're, yeah. they're, yeah, that's a distinct possibility. Um, and then the, the Board of Public Works got the, um, the vision statement, and they really haven't, they really didn't have time to discuss it, so it, they were instructed to um, review it, re come up with questions, and bring it back to the next board meeting, but it's not on the agenda for the next board meeting. So I'll talk to MJ and, and Will about getting it back on the agenda. Um, do you want to just table the, the discussion about plastic bags? And styrofoam, there's nothing urgent about it at this point. But well, if it's going to make sense. <clears throat> Is that the plastic yeah. bag okay. ban? So, um, so do you know if, if the third Wednesday of every month works for you? Or do you I guess so, yeah. Okay. I mean, I just put it on the spread menu, yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, I drafted a new letter and a new form, and I sent it to you this yep. morning. Okay. And so you can look at it, we can talk about it, and, and send it out to everybody else. And I guess that this meeting, the people who need to know more about what an art depot reuse center would be, because if you say those words, they probably won't get what that is. So you and I can talk about, right, we got something about, I mean, I can write something about it. If you like that, and we need to see the um, space. Yes, yes. 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 yes, we'll do that. Yeah. And I want to say if there's anyone on this committee who's interested in like an education subcommittee, I'm interested in working on education as a side issue, so educating the public, yeah. uh, which could take lots of different directions. So, yeah. Yeah. so we can meet we can meet separate from this meeting and you know have more time to sort of brainstorm and come up with ideas and, yeah. and then speaking of brainstorming then maybe we can do the arts rally brainstorming at the very latest next meeting because yeah. then it gets very it gets okay. very close. I'd rather do that sooner than, than a yeah, month from now. Yeah. I'd really, yeah. really rather do it sooner than a month from now because yeah. I think that gets too maybe late. You should do a subcommittee to present <laughs> to the next meetings. Would that be possible? Like a smaller group of, instead of having everything, you've yeah. been thinking about this and yeah. you have some ideas, maybe there could be some kind of cohesive um, presentation that we can hammer out at the next meeting. Why don't we, like are you going to have a smaller Why don't we meet next week at the meeting of yeah. and kind of come up with a, um, a game plan, mm -hmm. like a framework so that people can help yeah. us. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Can you want to put? Yeah. Okay. And, and I guess I'm just going to put. I'm just going to put the um. At the DPW conference room for the third Wednesday of every month, and then if we have subcommittee meetings, then I have to find out if a subcommittee of a subcommittee has to do open meetings. Right. Okay. Where's the second meeting? Here. No, it's going to be at the. Sure. What I can't even see is it. Did you see that Will and MJ? Yeah.